let us impartially <coughs> look at ourselves looking at our own experiences without any prejudice biases with impartial attitude is an essential factor of developing both insight and concentration in insight meditation we cultivate equanimity in tranquility jhana meditation also we cultivate equanimity as i mentioned last evening equanimity becomes either a feeling or impartial attitude both are wholesome impartial attitude comes from insight wisdom understanding equanimous feeling also arises from that understanding that impartial attitude to balance our emotions and speculative thinking with this attitude we must look at our own experiences when we are impartial we don't rush into anything we become very patient and carefully mindfully watch our experiences to see them exactly as they are so we incorporate impartiality for both insight and tranquility meditation we want to see without any biases our own experiences if we happen to be very selfish we can see that demanding all kind of things because of selfishness this is the very thing we overcome in both tranquility and insight meditation we learn to be generous generous with our greed and let go of it we become generous to be content and look at this state of mind with impartiality to see how generous we are in fact when we feel generosity within ourselves that alone gives us a great deal of relief that whereas others are selfish holding demanding we become generous when we see friendliness with impartial attitude we feel a great deal of 
actually because we don't have his sentiment. When we look at compassion with impartial attitude, we become glad, full of happiness, because whereas others are cruel, we are compassionate. <coughs> it is not just indirect self-praise, but looking at our own real, sincere mental development, we become happy about it. There's nothing wrong with being happy with our spiritual development. It is not a kind of attachment, but it is an experience of reality. That gladness does not mar our impartiality. That arises from genuine feeling of generosity, compassion and friendliness. These also are auxiliary factors to gaining concentration. So let us try to look at our impartial attitude. Then look at the impartial feeling. When the feeling arises, look at the feeling without getting carried away with disappointment or attachment, rejection or attachment. This gives us impartial or equanimous feeling. Feeling can be tempting if the feeling is pleasant, it can be rejecting when it is unpleasant. But with impartial feeling, equanimous feeling, we can maintain the balance. That is also a very important factor. In jhanic meditation, all through from the beginning to the end, equanimous attitude, equanimous feeling are there, but until we reach the third and fourth jhanic level, they are not conspicuous. Therefore, we had to find out this attitude and feeling of equanimity by just paying total undivided mindful attention to our feelings. Here again, although we practice tranquility meditation, Mindfulness also plays an important role in it. As we have mentioned in the past, even jhanic experiences can be maintained when we are mindful. The moment we lose mindfulness, we lose that jhana. And this mindfulness also grows along with the jhanic experiences until they begin to, until it manifests itself in the third and fourth jhanas. Attention is there. We must pay attention to our 
experiences impartially. and keep paying attention to the loving, friendly thought, compassion and generosity. Until they become the thoughts of initial application of thought in the first jhana. We don't lose attention there. So we keep keep paying attention to the jhanic state and don't lose it. Attention also is an integral part of all the jhanic experiences. Jhanic experiences are not coming from void. It comes from this mental training through mindfulness, attention and clear understanding. One difference there is that it has deeper concentration. All these factors support the development of concentration, making the mind calm and peaceful. At each stage, happiness, concentration, becomes sharp and clear and strong when it when we reach the third and fourth concentration becomes still stronger in the fourth level it is more strong than even the third and that concentration is possible when other factors are equally balanced. And that balancing always is the function of equanimity. So pay attention to your experience with impartial attitude. whether it is pleasant or unpleasant experience, pay impartial attitude, pay impartial attention. And that also helps to make the mind calm and peaceful. Now you see the same factors that we use for vipassana, we use for gaining concentration, making the body and mind calm and peaceful, tranquil, collected, composed. The factors that we use in concentration meditation are not different from those that we use for insight meditation. Insight meditation, we pay mindful attention, impartial attention to our experiences. In tranquility meditation, we pay mindful, impartial attention to our experiences. In tranquility meditation, we gain tranquility, peace, calm, steady, concentrated state of mind. In insight meditation we 
sharpen our insight, understanding, which also are incorporated in tranquility meditation. So, let us keep being mindful, impartial, equanimous attention to our experiences of peace, calmness, and happy state of mind. And with this attitude, let us relax the body, relax the mind, and make the body and mind steady, and hold them together with attention, with mindfulness, Whatever state of jhana you attain, be aware of it. If you lose it, regain it <coughs> by recollecting them, repeating them, attaining them, determining to stay a certain length of time and coming out of it. When you are fully mastered the first attainment, then your mind would be ready to go to the next. You will know when the mind is ready. Don't force yourself to jump to the higher levels, but let it happen. Each jhana has to be mastered in these ways of reflecting, remembering, knowing the weak factors, determining to attain it, determining to stay in certain Created the time and determined to come out of it. And that we do with a steady, consistent way for each jhana. Even if you do not attain a jhana, don't get disappointed. Your attempt, your training itself is a great, greatly important. If you do not attain it now, you attain later on. But keep trying. Keep trying to start with the first, first with the initial thoughts of loving friendliness, compassion and generosity. And maintain that, that is sustained thought. And I have confidence in your practice in the method, in the teaching, as confidence increases, you will be joyful, rapturous, that leads to happiness, which leads to concentration. When you master these five and stay in that and repeat it again and again until you are fully confident. Then you might lose interest in the initial thought and sustained thought, 
the moment you are totally uninterested in these two factors, you would reach the second level of jhana, where you have rapture, happiness and concentration. When you master that by repeated attaining, reflecting, determining, and coming out of it, you lose interest in rapture because it is close to resentment. When you lose interest in it, your mind will glide into the third, where you have mindfulness, equanimity, and happiness. When you repeat that and master it, each time you repeat, you would lose interest in happiness, then you would guide, glide into the fourth level of jhana, where mindfulness is pure, equanimous feeling is there, equanimous attitude is there, Concentration is the highest and deepest. This is a short review of the attainment of each level.